right, today we're looking at section 8-2, factoring by the greatest common factor, or the GCF, which we talked about in 8-1. So remember to take notes, pause the video at any time to write your notes, and complete the check it out problems on your worksheet after each of the examples. Our learning target today is I can factor polynomials by using, using the greatest common factor, or as we refer to it as the GCF. So remember, the distributive property states that we have a plus b, a times b plus a times c, that equals a times b plus c. We each have a factor of a, and then we can take the a out. If we distribute it back, those two expressions are equal. So this allows us to factor out the greatest common factor of the terms in a polynomial to write a factored form of the polynomial. So in unit 7, our last, last, our last unit, we were starting here come up to here. Now we're going backwards. We're going to be taking things apart. So polynomial is in its factored form when it's written as a product of monomials and polynomials that contain, that cannot be factored any further. They have no common factors within them. So here's our first example. We have, looking at example A, we have 2x squared minus 4. So we can look at our coefficients those each have a factor of 2. If we were to factor out a 2, and then we have to put parentheses for a distributive property, 2 times what will give us x squared? That's going to be x squared. 2 times what will give us a negative 4? That's going to be a negative 2. Now we can look within this. Though, are there any common factors between x squared and negative 2? And there isn't, so this is in factored form. We are done at this point. And we can check our work. You should always go back and check using distributive property. 2 times x squared is 2x squared. So we're just checking our work. And 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Yep, we're back to where we started with. So nice job. Now, looking at b, if you're not sure what the greatest common factors are, you can do what we did in unit 1, or in section 8.1. And take factors of 8, 4, and 16 and look for the greatest common factor. You can also go, you know, 8 has a factor of 4, 4 has a factor of 4, and 16 also. So if you factor out a 4, that's going to leave us 4 times what is 8, and that's 2. 4 times what's negative 4, that's a negative 1. And 4 times what's negative 16, that's a negative 4. Notice I'm leaving spaces here because we also have our variables to look at. So x squared, x, x cubed, x squared, and x. So remember in last lesson, 8, 1, we have the same base raised to different powers. We're going to, greatest common factor is going to be the base with the lowest power. So we can factor out an x, leaving us with x squared here, x here, and just a negative 4. And now we can look within, and we see that there are no like terms there. But let's go ahead and check our answers, or check our work. So we do 4x times 2x squared gives 8x cubed. 4x times a negative x gives a negative 4x squared. And 4x times a negative 4 is a negative 16x. Yep, we're back up to the beginning. So this may seem like we just did this, and we had. We're just going, we're just undoing what we did in our last lesson, or last unit, actually. So now we're at c, negative 14x minus 12x. So here, this caution down here, when you factor out a negative 1 as a first step, be sure it's included on all the other steps as well. Because here we can take out, they have a negative, each have a negative. 14 and 12 are both even, so factor a 2 out, and they each have an x, you can factor an x out. So that's going to give us 7 that's going to give us negative 14x, and then negative 2 times a negative 12 is going to be a positive 6, and we need an x there. So we can check our work and see if we distributed or factored properly. We're going to get negative 14x minus 12x squared. Yep, we're back to where we started. So again, with the negative 1, make sure it gets carried down. We kept the negative 2 here, and make sure we had to change the signs inside. Our last example for D, we're looking at this one, and 3 is prime, 2 is prime, and, and 
Here, this is fully factored. It's already been factored. You can't go any further. They have no other factor. So it's like all these others that we ended with. These are all fully factored. So here are four for you to try. Again, you can go down to find the greatest common factor with a factor tree. Or if you know your factors, you can see um, which ones are prime and which ones aren't. So now we're going to talk about writing expressions for the length and width of a rectangle. When with area expressed by a polynomial, we can need to write the polynomial as a product. And so let's look what that's going to see. The area of a, of a court for game squash is 9x squared plus 6x square meters. Fact is polynomial to find the possible expressions for the dimensions. So remember, area equals length times width. So it's a product of length and width. So we need to factor this expression. So area is going to equal 9 and 6, com greatest common factor, they each have a factor of 3. So we can pull that, factor that out. They each have x. This is the lowest power, though, so it be 3x. 3x times 9x, 3x times what here is going to give us 9x squared? That has to be a 3x, gives our x squared. And 3x times what will give us 6x, and that's going to be a positive 2. So that tells us, then, that either the length or width is 3x, and it's going to be x plus 2 for the other piece there. So again, this could be length or width, or width or length, it doesn't matter, but those would be the dimensions. Dimensions would be 3x by 3x plus 2, and that's going to be hard to write, so I won't do that. So those would be your dimensions. So here is your chance to check it out, bring any questions you have to class, and good luck. So just fully factor it. Sometimes the greatest common factor of terms is a binomial. We've been looking at just monomials. We can have a binomial. And it's called a common binomial factor. We really don't differentiate. It's still a co greatest common factor. And we do it the same way as we factored out the monomial factors. So here we have our first example. We have 5 times x plus 2 plus 3x times x plus 2. Looking here, these are grouped together. So this, those are two factors. They happen to be the same. So we can factor that piece out. We factor x plus 2 out, and that's going to then leave us with those two. So group again, 5 plus 3x. And yes, you can check your work and distribute. Make sure you can come back up. We have to distribute that there, too. So it gets a little messier, but I highly recommend doing that. So for B now, looking here, we happen to know these are grouped together. You need the grouping here. That's one uh, binomial. That binomial happens to be the same. So we can fat binomial out. So we get b squared plus 1 it has to be grouped still. And that's going to then leave us with a negative 2b. And we need a placeholder here, so that's got to be plus 1. If we don't have that there, then, because remember this is going to be 1 times that. And our last one. Here we have z squared minus 7, 2z cubed plus 1. And there's no, really no common factors here. This is already factored. We can't factor further. It be done. Here are your four to check it out. And again, you're looking for factors that are the same. You're looking for, this happens to be binomials. So good luck. And now we also can factor polynomial by grouping. So we're going to have four terms. We can group them. Polynomial has four terms. You may make two groups and factor out the greatest common factor from each of the groups. So for our first example, we have 6h to the fourth minus 4h cubed plus 12h minus 8. We can group those two terms together and those two terms together. So in our first set here, we can factor out each have a factor of 2 and h cubed, leaving us with 3h 
minus 2, and then plus carries down. And then this one, we can each have a factor of 4 in common. 4 times, that's going to be 3h minus 2. So we factored that, but we're not done, because now we're back to what we were in our last example. These two, each of these terms have a common factor, so we can now factor out 3h minus 2 from each of those, leaving us with 2h cubed plus 4. And so now we, we have 3h minus 2 times 2h cubed plus 4, but notice here we're not done yet. This expression has, this binomial has a factor of 2, which we can then factor out. So that moves to the front. We carry down the 3h minus 2, and the 2 is going to leave us with h cubed plus 2. Now we are done. So this one happened to be a few more steps. In your homework, I'm not sure you're going to be having that, but you should always check within your expressions your binomials, are, do they have more terms in common, and continue to do so. Now let's look at b. We have 5y to the 4th minus 15y cubed. We're going to group those two terms and those two terms and factor out. So these have a factor of 5y cubed, leaving us, leaving us with y minus 3. Plus, here we can factor out a y, that's going to give us y minus 3. So from here we can then factor out the y minus 3. That comes out front, leaving us with 5y cubed plus y. If you get to this point, almost done. I mean, you may be done, but in this case again, this term here, has that expression has a y in common. So y, then y minus 3, that's going to be times y 5y squared plus 1. And now, looking at each of those, they have nothing in common, and we are done. But check your answers. Go back, and I would do it by this point here. Make sure you, got just, you can distribute and go back to distribute a property. Here are your two check it outs. Good luck. So for this lesson, um, if you align your common factors, it can help you find your greatest common factor. Line up your x's and y's and your coefficients. If you go down the prime factors, when you factor out a negative 1 as a first step, make sure you carry it all the way through and check your work. Do what you did in Unit 7 in this case to go back and check to make sure you factored completely. Good luck and bring any questions to class.